Pros vs. Joes is a legendary show that had many legendary legends. After making over 50 Pros vs. Joes videos, it made me really start to wonder how many Pro Football Hall of Famers appeared on the show. To find this answer, it involved me watching all 48 episodes to see who the greatest of the greats really were. And spoiler alert, we have multiple GOATs show up. Before we get into this list, I have to give a shout out to the Hall of Fame host, Michael Strahan. He, along with Jay Glazer, hosted the show during seasons 4 and 5, but Strahan never actually laced him up. Out of the 40 former NFL pros that did lace him up on the show, 14 were Hall of Famers. Their careers span from Reagan to Obama, so just know that when I say this show went out and got the best there is, there was no stone left unturned. Without any further rambling, let's get to the list. Number 14. With the first spot on our list, we have me disrespecting kickers by putting the greatest kicker of all time, Morton Anderson, at the ass end of this list. I know kickers go hard for other kickers, so I honestly and respectfully say, my bad. This man had a longer career and scored more points than anybody else. To add on, he had two golden toes. Now at this point, I know what you're asking yourself. What the hell is a golden toe? I'm not too sure myself, but it is listed in his achievement section on Wikipedia. So I'm imagining it's some type of achievement, and that's the type of top tier research you get on this channel. My favorite challenge that I saw with Morton Anderson would have to be when they had him playing soccer out here. Now I'm not sure if it's because he's Danish, or if it's because he's kicked mad field goals and extra points and did it more so than anybody else, but he's really good at soccer. Who would have thunk it? Number Andre 13. Reed. With the next spot, we have Andre Reed. With a nickname like Yards After Carry, you already know what time it is with him. When it comes to Bills receiving records, just assume that he has the record for it. He played the most games and seasons in Bills history. That does include the infamous four consecutive L's the Bills took in the Super Bowl, but it was only so many words I could use to describe him before I got to bring that up. Besides, you have to make four Super Bowls to lose four Super Bowls. And on top of that, he made seven consecutive Pro Bowls. Really just one of the most underrated wide receivers ever that just does not get talked about enough. My favorite challenge with Andre Reed was when they had him doing this weird play action 1v1 drill. He can either pass it or run a route. He's absolutely dicing dudes up and everything is just going perfectly until he decides to randomly run it directly up the middle and he gets stopped by the Joe. Number Kevin 12. Green. Next up we have the mean machine Kevin Green. He is our only deceased pro of the day, so I had to start this entry off with a rest in peace to Kevin Green. He was one of the architects of the Steelers defense of the 90s with possibly one of the greatest team nicknames ever, Blitzburg. Who the hell is coming up with all these saucy ass nicknames for Steelers defenses for the past 50 years? Kevin Green racked up the most sacks by a linebacker and led the league in sacks twice, which was a record when he did it. I think the most noteworthy thing I read when I was doing my expert level research he was the person that convinced Goldberg to wrestle. Yes, Bill Goldberg. They were teammates together in Atlanta, first on the Falcons and then in the WCW. My favorite challenge with Kevin Green is really simple. The Joes just have to try to score past the goal line on Kevin Green. How do you think it goes? Brains get rattled, thoughts get erased, whole childhoods get forgotten. Kevin Green really might be better than therapy. Tim Number 11. Brown. Following that pick, we have Mr. Raider himself, Tim Brown. Before that, he was touchdown Timmy at Notre Dame. He holds a place in the College Football Hall of Fame thanks to becoming the first receiver to ever win a Heisman. Once he came in as the sixth pick of the 1988 draft, he made an immediate impact by leading the league in kickoff returns. As a receiver, he became third on the all-time receptions, reception touchdowns, and reception yards list when he retired. One of the all-time great special teams and receiving players that has graced the football field in the 100-year-plus history. My favorite Tim Brown challenge would have to be when they had a three-on-three, -three and Tim Brown decided to turn into Sean Taylor in the Pro Bowl and try to end a man's career in a charity game. Number John 10. Randall. With possibly the wildest man on this list, we have John Randall. I really mean it when I say he is one of the most extra dial dudes out there. He talks so much trash in the NFL and on this show, his nickname was Motormouth. You can't even hate on him for that because he went from being undrafted to putting on a gold jacket. And he was undersized, but John Randall never let a single thing stop him. He holds the record for the most sacks by a defensive tackle, and he definitely wasn't undersized compared to the Joe. My favorite John Randall clip, and possibly the greatest of the entire show, has John Randall rushing undefended quarterbacks and just committing 
man, hits that would get you kicked out of the league now. Like, you could not do this now. You would be charged with some if you did this nowadays. And if the bountiful concussion wasn't enough for you, John Randall is talking crazy trash the entire time. Give everything you had. It didn't work. Come on, sucker. I'm gonna rock your ass all night long, boy. You my bitches. Number nine. Coming straight from the greatest show on turf, Isaac Bruce. He, along with notable grocery bagger Kurt Warner, led a Garbaggio Rams team that hadn't made it higher than third place in their division in nine years to a Super Bowl. In that game, he had his Super Bowl moment when he caught the game-winning 73-yard touchdown catch. He had a very productive 16-year career where he ranked fifth in receptions and second in receiving yards when he retired. Came into the league with a receipt of hairline and managed to retire with it still intact. Really an icon for a lot of people out there. So attempting to answer the question of what my favorite Isaac Bruce moment is actually very difficult because Isaac Bruce lost literally every single challenge that he was in on the show. He did score two touchdowns in the two three versus three challenges they have at the end, but he went zero for six for all of his challenges. Number eight. Next up, we have Warren Moon. He took an unconventional route to the NFL by first playing in the CFL where he put up straight road to glory numbers. Six years, five Grey Cup championships. He threw for 5,600 yards and rushed for 500 his last season. Like, man, who turned his game to rookie? Speaking of rookie, when he got to the NFL, he proved that wasn't a fluke by throwing for the most yards for a rookie at the time. It's even more impressive because he's one of only three before 2008 in the top 25. That's really a random ass stat. Dudes like Mac Jones and Jameis Winston threw more than every Hall of Famer in the rookie year. I say that to say, Warren Moon was ahead of his time. He was also a pioneer in the sense that he was only the second black quarterback to go to a Pro Bowl and currently the only black quarterback in the entire Hall of Fame, but that stat is not going to age well. My favorite Warren Moon challenge has to be to the one where one has him doing him this like pro, pro style target throw, and it really does really know the difference between an Arena Joe and uh, an Hall of Fame quarter. Number Derek seven. Brooks. One of the most feared linebackers showed up next, Derek Brooks. In his 14-year career, he never missed a day. And for all but three games his rookie season, he never missed a start. He transformed the Butt Cheeks Buccaneers team and helped them go from 16 years of mediocrity and missing the playoffs to one of the greatest defenses ever and a Super Bowl winner. He was an Iron Man because of his durability and because it felt like someone smacked you with a sack of iron ingots when he hit sticky. My favorite Derrick Brooks moment on the show had to be when he turned into an elite DB on the 3v3 they had at the end of their episode. And also Jeff Garcia of all people turned into a nasty ass linebacker. Number six. Truly a man defined by his nickname, the playmaker, Michael. Irvin. In a five-year span, he had three rings, made five consecutive Pro Bowls, and three All-Pros. This man helped the Cowboys to somehow be on top of every ESPN broadcast for the last 30 years, even though they've only won five playoff games since he retired. The younger people might just know him for sweating hard as hell on ESPN, but in the 90s, he was all decade. And when it comes to trash talking, he's all time. Michael Irving's appearance was definitely of note. He broke everyone's ankles, just shimmying people left and right like a tornado came through. And then he ends up just grabbing some dude by his prison pouch. And the whole time, he's just talking trash. I spent half of my life in his zone. I thought just to give it a ball a trip. <laughs> one man against three. Been like that all my life. Oh, you got to do better than that. Overall, one of the greatest people on the show's history. Eric. Number five. Rushing into the next spot, we have Eric Dickerson. Putting on for nearsighted people everywhere, he became one of the most prolific running backs ever. He was drafted second overall and immediately began his rivalry with the record book. His rookie season, he broke all the rookie rushing records, was named to the Pro Bowl, won Rookie of the Year, and NFC Player of the Year. Just straight up Madden career mode vibes. That led to him being the fastest player to 10,000 rushing yards and the second all-time rushing leader. My favorite Eric Dickerson moment has to be when they had him rushing against these people that are definitely young enough to be his son. He's making them look silly out here. And he does not look like he's 47 years old and 15 years retired. Number four. One of the most ferocious players at every position in the secondary. The Hot Rod, Rod Woodson. There wasn't anything he couldn't do. 
He came back from a season-ending knee injury the same season to play in the Super Bowl. Then he went on to mentor a young Ray Lewis and help lead that Ravens team to another Super Bowl. Possibly the strongest man with an S-curl in NFL history. The Rod Woodson experience on Pros vs. Joes is definitely a wild one. They have the Joes catching swing passes and Rod Woodson just hitting these people with no blockers or nothing. Between six people, they get 20 yards. Number oh. three. If you don't know his name, just wait until his first touchdown celebration. I guarantee you won't forget him. It's Terrell Owens. Everyone watching this video knows who T.O. is, and I really would do more to hype this man's football skills, but that's not why he came on the show. They actually had this man playing basketball with Donovan McNabb and Antonio Gates versus Hakeem Olajuwon, Kenny the Jet Smith, and high yellow boyfriend Natasha Max but you put on quite a show. slash NBA champion Rick Fox. Pros vs. Joes, Spike TV, and television as a whole was just crazy in the early 2000s. The entire T.O. episode of Pros vs. Joes is definitely a spectacle akin to something like a celebrity all-star game, but the most interesting thing is definitely the fact that this is the one and possibly only reunion between T.O. and Donovan McNabb I can even find on TV. And if you've heard what T.O. has said recently about Donovan McNabb, I knocked chunky suits on then you can probably assume that this is the last one for maybe a while. Number two. When a man is underrated and still the greatest ever at his position, you know his name is nothing to be played with. Bruce Smith. He embodied the wild ass Bills fans that you see in Arctic temperature replicating Mick Foley versus Edge at WrestleMania 22 during a tailgate. That's to say, someone was getting their ass lit up when Bruce Smith lined up. He's the all-time leader in sacks. He won two Defensive Player of the Years and led his team to four consecutive Super Bowls. But insert whatever I said earlier about the Bills. You have to make four Super Bowls to lose four Super Bowls. Somehow, this man is only number 31 on the NFL's own list of all-time greats. Refs lie, the NFL lies, but numbers never will. My favorite Bruce Smith clip has to be the good old classic, have Bruce Smith rush in on the quarterback's blind side and just try to blast him. Why having the all-time leader in sacks rush in unprotected on an average as Joe is a good idea is beyond me. It's number one. Four letters to define one man. G-O-A. T. His defenders only saw four letters and two numbers, and that was the R-I-C-E with the 80 underneath it on the back of his jersey. Jerry yeah. Rice! Yeah. Another list that you found Jerry Rice at the top of. Pros vs. Joes really went out and got the greatest football player of all time for the first event of the very first episode. How fitting. This man is pretty much the Wilt Chamberlain of football, but there's color footage of him. To name all his records would pretty much turn this into a Jerry Rice video because it would take too damn long. Just go into your uncle's closet and grab the Jerry Rice jersey out the back and familiarize yourself with him. Now, you might be thinking that because Jerry Rice had just retired in the last couple of years and he's widely considered the greatest wide receiver and the greatest football player of all time, that Jerry Rice would have absolutely no problem with these jokes. And you would be correct. Goats do goat things. 